Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another response to community feedback update. I'm your host, Nathanius, and today we're talking about Reapers, Corruptors, Widow Mines, and Hydralisks. First and foremost, I want to thank the Blizzard team. I know there was a long period of time between this feedback update and the last one. Um, obviously, not too much anything interesting has happened. A lot of Terrans have been eliminated from the GSL, so, you know... We only really look at the top, top, top five players in the world for for a lot of stuff. So it was important to see all of that. But let's just talk about this. Um, and I have a few things that I want to say about this whole process that we don't really get to see. But first and foremost, we'll just go over what Blizzard said. Um, thanks for playing the test map. The two people that wanted the portrait and uh, cannon rushed that one guy. I think Pig tried to test it and someone cannon rushed him because the only only reward for playing the test map is winning one game so you don't even need to test the balance um so here's what they want to do they want to put this in the game and just add it to starcraft 2 immediately probably by this tuesday the first change is they want to take the widow mines shield splash from 40 damage to 25 now what this means is with a normal splash that's 40 damage it's going to be 65 damage splash to protoss units instead of 80 so the big thing that this does is it reduces the casualties of splash from units uh, such as sentries and high templar. High templar and sentries both get one shot in the current live version of the game by widow mine splash. If a widow mine hits an immortal and there are three sentries around it, all three sentries will die. In this patch, those sentries will be alive with 15 hit points. Uh, same thing goes for the high templar, which means the shields can regenerate, and as long as you don't eat two widow mine shots, uh, you'll be good. So basically, this patch is going to make it a little bit less punishing to eat mine shots uh on your lower uh hit point units i don't personally think this has much of an effect on zealot archon because the most important part of zealot archon is that your mines are killing one zealot one mine kills one zealot 10 mines kills 10 zealots the splash damage if you have any supporting units should be more than enough to finish them off so next thing hydralisk health increase from 80 to 90 we all know the hydralisk was super good in the original patch 3.8 however i've made the case that you should not focus on the fixing units by making changes to things that are extreme like range or speed those are things that are very frustrating for a lot of players to deal with so find another way to make the hydralisk a core unit 10 hit points was my suggestion um if this isn't enough i don't even see a problem going to 100 and maybe taking doing some other tweak to a different unit um hydralisks now will definitely never be one shot by liberators with this change because they do have armor and even what a plus three liberator would now be a 90 damage so if you if a Liberator has plus three and your Hydra doesn't have armor, I'm pretty sure Hydras have one base armor, so it shouldn't matter at all. So they can't get one shot by Liberators anymore, which means Hydras will definitely be good versus Terran to some degree um, outside of the normal realm that we talk about. Also, it won't be two shot by Siege Tanks unless the tanks are at plus three. I think it is, right? Tanks do 40 damage versus normal units now, and it's 44 with plus one, so Hydra would survive. And then it's 48. Okay, so tank needs plus two to two-shot a Hydralisk, which does help a lot. As we know, most Terran players who go for bio don't get the mech upgrades, especially because they want those ship upgrades for Liberators. <clears throat> Moving forward, uh, that's also try to help the Hydralisk against carriers, but that's that's not going to do anything. Um, Corruptors, movement speed change from 4.13 to 4.72. Uh, they want Corruptors to be able to chase down Medivacs, Banshees, Liberators, um, Warp Prisms, I think this is going to be the death of the Warp Prism in PvZ, right? I don't know what this is going to do, but I feel like a lot of Zerg players are going to be building Spires more. Um, the biggest impact that this is going to have is you're going to be able to build Mutas, and your opponent, if they try to build Phoenix, Corruptors are going to be so much better because of this change, Acceleration. When the Corruptor starts to move, it will, it will reach its maximum speed much faster than before. I played around with this a little bit in the test map. It is a big deal. This with the movement speed upgrade are huge. The Parasite Spore, that's just the name of the Corruptor's attack. It's damage points. So instead of a 0.11 second delay from when the Corruptor turns to shoot between when it actually shoots, it's now 0.04 seconds. So the Corruptor pretty much shoots like a Marine. Um, obviously, Marines have no damage point. They instantly attack when they stop. But the Corruptor shoots really, really fast. And I think the reason Blizzard wants to do this is so that when the carriers instantly kill all of your Corruptors, now there's a chance that two or three of them will be able to shoot before they die. Um, this is a cool patch 
to make the corruptor a bit more useful and viable in a lot of scenarios. I don't think this is a huge fix for the carrier thing, but I don't know. We'll see. This is my favorite part of, uh, of the patch that they're talking about is the Reapers in Terran versus Zerg. And Blizzard, get rid of the, get rid of the rest of this. Just make it Reapers, N not openers and TVZ. Reaper openers and TVT are notoriously terrible. I have publicly and personally been making a big campaign against Reapers. There are a couple of issues, and I'm going to ignore everything that they have written here because the real problem with Reapers is that you have a unit that you build before anything else that is not only more hit points than a Marine. So as far as normal early attacks go, it's not like you're going to one or two tap it with something, but it has health regeneration, which is nice. That was a cool way to make the Reaper useful in Heart of the Swarm. In Legacy of the Void, they're like, you know what? People don't build Reapers past the early game. So how can we make people want to build Reapers more? Let's give it an ability that is only good in the early game, which was the KD-8 charge grenade. And this basically is a AOE. It's not a splash damage. It doesn't do less damage if you're further away from the center of the grenade. It does 10 damage to everything that's hit by it. And it knocks them back and stuns units. So and when I say stun, I mean this isn't just unit gets pushed to the side and can keep shooting. No, the unit for the entirety of that little hop can't fight. And that's a very important thing to bring up because oftentimes when you see Terran players beating Zergs with mass reapers, it's a Zerg player. The best thing that you can really do against it, unless you're on a map where the reapers are just terrible, you have to build a ton of lings and try to get us around. And even then, reaper grenades are just insanely strong. This has also completely gimped openers in Terran versus Terran since the beginning of Legacy of the Void. You cannot open with a one barracks marine expand. You cannot open command center first. You cannot open, open marine into hellion on many maps because prox reaper is so good. Reapers beat hellions 1v1. And then you also have the grenades. That was a fast fact from Wings of Liberty. Er, no, 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 that's not true. Even after the light damage was removed, they still beat Hellions 1v1 in Heart of the Swarm in almost every scenario because of the Hellions' attack speed and the Hellions' damage point. <clears throat> so, moving forward, some of the things they want to do, maybe not let it damage buildings. I don't like that. The People are not winning games because they're Reapers. Like, this is Blizzard saying that they want people to build spines. No, absolutely not. First of all, spine crawlers don't have armor while they're building. So the two armor that the spine normally has that makes it really good against reapers is not effective until the, the spine crawler is done. Second of all, spine crawlers take forever to build. Third of all, static defense is static. The reaper grenade needs to be removed or completely redesigned to balance out the early game. If you are not a pro gamer, let's just, let's just take the balance part out of this. The reaper grenade is one of the single most frustrating abilities in the entire game because it has such a low cooldown. It does a lot of damage for a unit that shoots two attacks, which means armor heavily affects the Reaper's ability to fight. And it does AoE with knockback. You can kill Larva with Reaper grenades. Once you get 10 Reapers, killing buildings is pretty easy. Even, even some of the less aggressive openers, like four or five Reapers, those builds are insanely difficult to deal with, especially at the lower levels when a player who is a Zerg is not only trying to defend, but also trying to macro. And with the way that these builds generally work, it's just a Terran player only microing their Reaper, which I, I, I have to say, Reaper builds are disgusting for TVT and TVZ. If Blizzard wants the Reaper to have an ability, they should retool the KD-8 charge, make it better, and put a research on it. There you go. That's the best way that you're going to do it, is you have to find another way. Um, obviously... <laughs> StarCraft 2 does not seem to be the game for spider mines. I really like how Reapers work in Nova Covert Ops, but that does that overlaps with the Whittle Mine. So that's not that's not a thing. I don't I don't care. You know, if you want to make the grenade detonate instantly, make it cost 100 100 to research so that having Reapers in the mid game is actually a good thing to do and have it auto cast or something. I don't know. I don't care what you want to do. Just the early game of StarCraft 2 is so frustrating and punishing with units like the Oracle, the Reaper, ravager rushes all of this stuff is insanely insanely not fun and as a professional commentator as someone who's casted the biggest matches uh the only time that a reaper cheese is ever fun is when a marine goes bobbling up in the air for two seconds and roddy and i make a joke about him going oh no i'm in the air like no no or when a zerg defends it in a funny way like having two banelings on top of a ramp but that doesn't happen either so seriously um i'm not going to try to devil's advocate the reaper 
It's annoying. The health, the health regeneration is really nice. Maybe make it reheal faster and just get rid of the grenades so that it can go in and out more. I don't know what to tell you, but it certainly is not having a 10 damage AOE uh, knockback stun ability. I don't even know. If, the, if units could shoot while they're being moved by the Reaper, even that would help a ton with getting the last hit off on Reapers. Um, I would, at the very, very least drastically increase the cooldown and I, I even still think that the bigger thing to do would probably be to just straight up remove the grenade and since you know blizzard has made it seem like they're willing to make more interesting changes to the game come back to this at a later time for patch 3.9 or three well no we're not we're on 3.9 uh patch 4.0 4.20 whatever you want to do and when they make more interesting changes to make some more units. So to me, this feels like a really good patch for the Corruptor. I like this a lot. Um, as far as balance goes, I don't really care. Corruptor is a boring unit. This is going to make the Corruptor a lot more useful in certain army compositions. And if it breaks your precious balance, it can always be fixed. Um, units should be made interesting and useful. This is important for the Hydralis. This is important for the Corruptor. And back to what I was saying at the start of this video, I really feel like Blizzard hasn't clearly outlined what they want this Mind Splash to do because the initial talks about this were that they wanted to make uh, Zealot-based compositions better. This is not going to do it. I do not believe this is going to make Zealot Archon a viable unit composition. If you want Zealot Archon to be a viable unit composition, the Widow Mind cannot one-shot Protoss units. That is a huge deal. In fact, it is the number one strength of the Widow Mind is that it instantly removes units that are caught by it now at the same time i could say unit caught in photon overcharge also gets instirect as far as defensive things go so back to my point if you want to make that unit if you want to make the widow mine weaker you have to take into account that the widow mine is also one of terran's only good units at dealing with early stuff people open fast Mine to deal with the Cyclone Rushes or the Reaper Rushes constantly. You see even a GSL, a Fast Widow Mine Opener at the front of your base to try and catch a unit early on. Um, and that's just the small of it. You see it almost every single game against Protoss because getting an Engineering Bay and two Missile Turrets is the cost of two barracks that you could have had your production going much earlier. Whereas you don't have a similar investment from other races because, well, let's be honest... That fast e eBay, no one gets plus one attack before they have their main base saturated. And missile turrets, as last time I checked, don't make you mine any faster. So, if you want Widow Mines to be nerfed to allow Zealot compositions to be better, you have to get rid of some of the main target shield damage. And, if you want Terran players to not all want to quit the game when you make that change, there has to be a significant tweak to either the Oracle or... Something that lets you get turrets faster, um, like not needing an engineering bay to build one. And even then, that's still really frustrating, but I think a welcome compromise um, that some, some players would be willing to make. Or, well, obviously I would ask for an oracle nerf, but that's beside the point. Um, I don't feel like there was really any uh, explanation given for this. These don't need explanation. These tweaks are, This tweak is so small. What's the worst thing that could happen, right? People start building hydralisks. Okay, well... We'll see what, what we know. We'll figure it out from there. It'll be more interesting than uh, getting Ravager rushed, right? So that's my response to this week's community feedback. I like a lot of the changes that we have here. And please, for the love of God, fix this Reaper stuff, man. Because one of the biggest issues right now in TVT is aggressive builds are so insanely good that you do not have any time to ramp up any sort of good mid game that allows you to deal with some of this big drop shit. Obviously, I'm not a pro gamer. I'm speaking to you as someone who plays this game for fun and enjoys it. And Reapers and Terran versus Zerg are not fun. Reapers and Terran versus Terran are not fun. The only people who like these units are the same people that like proxy oracle builds, people who like to win games quickly. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to check out my stream, twitch.tv slash Nathanius, and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube, youtube.com slash Nathanius. Have a great day. Beep boop.